नमस्ते शर्मला दीदी नमस्ते टू एवरी वन गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम टू द मॉर्निंग सेशन नमस्ते नमस्ते तारो प्रसन्ना जी सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम वी आर डिस्कसिंग यू एच वी थ्री एंड इन यू एच वी थ्री वी स्टार्टेड विद मॉड्यूल टू इन मॉड्यूल टू we said our focus is on understanding the human being and the expands or the potential of the human being so in this lecture that we started yesterday we started talking about right understanding so we keeps using this term right understanding but to have the clarity of what exactly is right understanding we keep saying right understanding or understanding the reality seeing the reality the way it is or the completeness of right understanding these are terms that we keep using so to have the clarity of what exactly is this right understanding we had a little bit of discussion so when you are seeing any reality what do you see in it what do you understand from it that will depend on where you are looking from meaning which activity in the self you are looking from now if we are looking from tasting and selecting area within you know the lowest activity in the self then we'll be looking at what the thing looks like remember we said tasting selecting has to do largely with the sensations that we get through the body and so if you see something you see a tree or you see a plant or you see another human being if you are looking from the tasting selecting level then your focus will largely be on the form of that unit what it looks like the shape the size that is largely our focus if you go a little higher and you go to thinking thought logic analyzing comparing that activity within us the one just above the selecting tasting or little more subtle than selecting tasting there you may be able to see the property of a unit so what do we mean by property the effect that one unit has on another unit so supposing you see a fruit and you are looking from the selecting tasting now your focus will largely be on what does this fruit taste like what does it look like what does it taste like so i might do things like you know eating more and more to get the taste my focus is taste or my focus is what it looks like the shape and all of that if i am looking at the property then i will also see its impact on another unit so for that you have to compare or not exactly compare but try to see the interaction between two units so for instance that fruit that i want to eat now i will also look at the property means the, what kind of impact it has on the body when i eat it so whether it nurtures the body or it harms the body that property i'll be able to see at the level of thinking but then there are deeper activities more subtle activities in the self which i may not be awakened to so you'll for find that largely we function at this form 
and at most property. So here you see lot of variety and you find lot of change. One human being looks a certain way, another human being looks a different way. One person's body is tall, one person's body is short, one person is thin, one person is stout. So like that, our focus is on form, the looks, and to some extent, the property. And these keep changing. But if you go with the higher activities within the self, so you have to awaken to these higher activities. If you're not using them or if you're not aware of them, obviously you cannot use them to look at anything else in a unit. But when you awaken to the higher activities within you, so you say you awaken to the activity of contemplation. Now, what do you see? So now when you awaken to the contemplation, you start being able to see the relationship. Relationship of you as a unit with other units. Or in other words, relationship of any unit with any other unit. And you start seeing your role, your participation in this larger order. So what is your role in the relationship with any other unit? That becomes clear to you. That is being referred to as the natural characteristic. Then if we are able to awaken to the activity of understanding within the self, then you are also able to see the innateness, the self-organization, the harmony that is there in every unit. So for instance, for any plant, we were saying, it is innate that the plant grows. You will never find a plant that doesn't grow. All plants grow. That is innate in a plant. That is part of its self-organization. You cannot change that. And this is one thing in that harmony of the unit. You will find so many things that you know, are reflecting this harmony in every unit. So an understanding of that and then if we awaken to the activity of realization, the highest or the subtlest activity within the self, then we will have the ability to see the submergence of all the units in space. Space is the subtlest reality. And though we may not have the competence to see it right now, we all have the potential to be able to see it directly within us without the use of the body, just from within the self, by awakening to this activity of realization. So when you awaken to the activity of realization, then you are able to see the coexistence, the submergence of all the units in space. Now, if you look at these three, the natural characteristic, the innateness, and the coexistence, this will be through the activities of contemplation, understanding, and realization. Now you find this gives you an idea of that which is definite in existence, that which has continuity that which is universal, that which is the essence of all, it, it's there in all the units. So if you are able to see all of these parts in a unit, 
right? Then we would call it that we are understanding that unit correctly, or in other words, that we are under we are looking at that unit or understanding that unit in its completeness. So this we had talked about yesterday. We asked this question, reflect on how some things in all human beings are different from one another and how some things are similar in all human beings. And look at the human being as a whole. Look at the self also. Look at the body also. And reflect on this so that we can discuss it today. So if any of you could do this, you know, if you would like to share whatever your observations were. Good morning. Didi, namaste, Didi. Namaste. Sabiko, namaste. Didi, uh, this is with regard to this slide, Didi. Mm -hmm. uh, you have mentioned many times that we should not see the labels, uh, but still I am stuck up here, Didi. I find these two terms, natural characteristic and innateness, both being same. Natural characteristic has to do with seeing the relationship, the participation. And innateness has to do with the self-organization, the harmony that is there in every unit. They're two different things. No? We'll come into this. We'll, we'll take more examples and we'll do it activities in a little more detail then it will become clear probably. Thank you Didi. Good morning Didi. Good morning to UHP family. Uh, when I have observed about the the differences and the you know similarity mm -hmm. like for the body we can see the height, weight and the, the complexion and all. Mm -hmm. For the body I was saying, okay, all those things are there. The similarities are, are also there and the uh, differences are also there. But when it comes to the self, uh, the similarity that I have observed is like there is a, um, like everyone wants to help each other. If, even if we don't know someone, like we are on the road and if we ask them something about the direction, so they are ready to help. There also you will find that, you know, if you are able to see the relationship, you will always be willing to help. But if you don't see the relationship, you may not do that. So then it is not definite. It is not similar in all. I have a natural acceptance for it. A natural acceptance to help the other. That's right. what you're saying, no? Right, right. So when do I help the other? When do I have concern for the other? When I see my relationship with them. Right. But at that particular point, we are not uh, uh, seeing any relationship. I mean, we are not stopping there. No? It, it just comes out. Yeah, but at base, we have assumed something. no, Or we have understood something. Okay. Okay. That's how it comes from where. Like, what do you mean when it comes, like you have some feeling in you for the other? No, isn't it? We may not be able to appreciate it. We may not be able to see it. But ultimately, it is reflecting in our behavior. Right. Isn't it? Hmm. If somebody is in a bad mood, say, and another person asks for direction, he may not give it also. Isn't it? <laughs> no, possible. If somebody is not in a good mood, they've had a fight, <laughs> to ask that person, they <laughs> may not be ready to help. They may be busy with their own thoughts. <laughs> they will say, go see yourself. Don't ask me. Isn't it? Yeah. So, Essentially, what we are trying to say is, if I don't see the relationship, I may not have concern for the other. Isn't it? What do I mean by seeing the relationship? It's essentially to do with my participation. So my participation means 
my role in that relationship whether it be two people whether it be my family whether it be society whatever it is if i am seeing the relationship at any level then i will focus on my role in that relationship and i will do justice in the relationship with him this part i am able to awaken to it when i awaken to the the act of contemplation once i am i have awakened contemplation then um, my role becomes clear it becomes definite that yes this is what i need to do when i am not aware of it then i may have different assumptions like it is their problem it doesn't concern me why should i bother i may think that way also because i am busy with my own problem i am not looking outside of that i am not able to see my relationship with the other so i am busy with my own issues i am unhappy within and so on are you able to see the difference yeah so when i was observing my uh, imagination what i have uh, observed is mostly i think about all those things that has happened you know mm-hmm. the whole day so i was not able to understand the um, reason behind it but today uh, what i understood maybe i uh, uh, could guide me for that if i have the right understanding so i was thinking why i am thinking about the same thing again which has already uh, passed so i was trying to um, see my role like if i have done it correctly or not and uh, then again when i asked why i want that so i thought i want acceptance or appreciation from the other person so i was actually think seeing it again if i have done it well i said it's quite possible Uh-huh. because what you can see for yourself only you can say that no mm-hmm. yes it's first i have to accept myself you know um, instead of waiting other person to accept or appreciate i think i should understand and uh, accept myself i should know okay uh, i should allow myself to make mistake and learn that is what i have understood if you could so like we said no we may have many assumptions and we may have assumed many things about others about myself isn't it we have a mental picture of ourselves in a certain way and if my within me my feeling is not ensured meaning i am not comfortable within from within if i am not happy within myself then i am bound to search for happiness from outside unless i am able to see that this feeling that is leading to happiness or unhappiness in me is possible to have within myself na without being dependent on the other but right now for most of us that's how it is isn't it we are always looking for the right feeling from somebody else from outside why because my feeling is not ensured in me if i was calm comfortable happy within confident you know rightly able to evaluate myself then i will not look for appreciation from the other from outside because i know what i am i don't need somebody else's appreciation to tell me whether i am doing the right thing or not doing the right thing isn't it so there what i will do is not that i will not have concern for the other i will continue to have in fact i will have even more concern i will with that right feeling if i am able to see my relationship with the other i will have concern for the other and i will try to help the other 
You see the difference? If I am busy yes. with my own issues, when can we help the other? Only when we are feeling comfortable within, isn't it? Right. If we ourselves are disturbed, where is the question of helping somebody else because we are not able to help ourselves only? Isn't it? Yeah. So essentially, for the most part, you know, when we start our journey, this is how it is. We are trying to get happiness from outside, whether it be from the body through the right sensation, whether it be by getting the right feeling from somebody else. Now that shift has to take place where my happiness doesn't necessarily need to come from outside because that source of happiness is within me. My feeling, like we are doing in the exercises, as we go further in the exercise, we'll be able to see how that is possible. And we have a natural acceptance for it. We do have a natural acceptance for relationship, for harmony, for coexistence. And so when we awaken to these higher activities of contemplation, understanding, realizations, then we are able to see our role, our participation, we are able to have this right feeling. So we keep saying this, no? right understanding, right feeling, right thought. So if at the level of understanding, if I can see things the way they are, based on that, I have my feeling. If I have assumed something else about the environment, about nature, about other human beings, then whatever I have assumed based on that, I will have my feeling. And the thought will flow according to the feeling. So essentially, the difference is just whether I understand or I don't understand. Whether I have awakened to the higher activities or not awakened. So as I awaken to the higher activities, I am able to see the reality more and more in its completeness. But if I have assumed something about the reality, then it is not sure which way I will go, what will be my behavior like, what I will think and feel, because it depends on my assumption. If I assume, like we keep saying this, no? if I assume that I have a relationship with my immediate family members, um, say, in the family that I grew up in. Then I will behave a certain way with them. But if I have assumed my relationship is only with these people and not with the you know, relatives of my husband or my spouse, then my behavior with those people will be different from what it is with these people. Why? Because I have assumed that my relationship is with these people, not with those people. That is one example. But there can be many examples like this. Because I can live with many assumptions. And the expression of those assumptions will come out in different forms of behavior. So at the level of behavior, at the level of thought, there will be a lot of variety, a lot of change. But as you awaken to the higher activities, you see the definiteness, that which is unchanging, that which is universal, that which is continuous. And so you are able to, as you bring your feeling and thought in line with that understanding, then there is definiteness in the feeling, in the thought, and in the behavior. I mean, I'm just giving examples. I'm not saying specifically for you, but just as a means of trying to understand. Did it help? Yes, Titi, yes. When, like, for, for a particular person, uh, there is a conflict. Uh, I don't have right feeling for that person. So mm -hmm. uh, after the UHP, I was actually trying to understand, like, you know, there is a difference in competence, but 
uh, we are all similar when that per when i am away from that person i okay i have the understanding but when i am uh, near to that person again i don't have the right feeling so that means i have not understood it correctly that's true it's not understanding see understanding doesn't keep changing what is happening is i am thinking of other things when i am not with that person so it is not on the surface i may not be able to see it it's not on the surface for me but when i see that person it triggers past memories past experiences and i come back to those same emotions so then i am able to see it can you see the difference yeah yeah so how should i go about it well that's what we are doing the exercise for mhm mm so as we go further in the steps you will see what we can do to try to have the right feeling all the time for everyone not mm -hmm. just selective because ultimately you know we do have a relationship with all we may not be able to see it but it is there and i have a natural acceptance for this relationship with all and whenever i go against my natural acceptance then there is bound to be disturbance disharmony within me that also i may not observe if i am not referring to the natural acceptance i may not be able to observe that but as i keep observing i notice that whenever i go against my natural acceptance there is a issue i have some discomfort within So what is the solution? Go by the natural acceptance. Okay. Ha, this reference is actually helping me. Like, if I can check my feeling, okay, it's not as per natural acceptance, then I can change it there. You know, that, but that is a temporary thing. But it's about actually <laughs> at the subtle level, which I need to work on. Yeah. You, so the, yeah. You are you are able to change the feeling means. at that moment you are thinking about yeah. something and then you are saying okay it's better to have this feeling and so you have that feeling but feeling is more subtle than thought so if you are trying to change the feeling through thought it will not work long term it cannot be sustained because the feeling is the one that is overpowering so whatever the feeling that will drive the thought not the other way around the other way around you can manage few times but again you'll slip back so it has to come from the directly working on the feeling that what we are saying no observe the imagination observe the feeling particularly the feeling this is important because only when you observe the feeling and bring it in line with natural acceptance it initially it may take lot of effort and that also we'll see that feeling is being driven by the sanskar whatever i have assumed about things so unless i can you know if my assumptions are not set right this feeling also will keep going by my assumption isn't it right so ultimately i have to work on the assumptions how do i work on the assumptions same thing i have to look at my natural acceptance and slowly bring things in line with my natural acceptance initially it will take lot of effort it will take time certainly and slowly with this as i keep awakening to my higher activities slowly i will be able to see the relationship with all i will be able to see the innateness the coexistence and then i am able to have definiteness in my conduct in my feeling in my thought in my conduct it is a long way but okay. this is one process by which you can get there okay, okay. Did you want last question? Could you please let me know what is the what do you mean when you say imaging in in the um, in yeah, in the imagination? You have desire, thought, expectation, mm -hmm. three activities in the imagination, isn't it? Right. Huh? Yeah. Yes. In the desire part, whatever is your desire, it seems to appear in the form of an image to you, isn't it? 
within you like a picture is formed mm -hmm. okay that we are referring to as imaging important thing is to try to see it within yourself then there is no doubt more than the word it is how you see the reality within yourself so when we are saying this you know desire thought expectation it has one connotation if i see it as information but if i can see it within myself i can relate it to my observation of my imagination now it becomes very clear now there is no doubt so try and see it within yourself yeah okay didi can you please give me an exa example for this when you are saying the picture and the image image means just it is a term like supposing if i am looking at you know um, trying to get happiness from outside now i think if i get a new car i will be happy what do you see within you you see the picture of a car no okay isn't it you see it like an image like a picture mm -hmm. that only is imaging okay but it is a part of the imagination it's not the whole imagination Right, right. You have desire, which is associated with the imaging, the thought, which is associated with the analyzing, comparing, and the expectation, which is associated with selecting, tasting. So all these put together form the imagination. Okay, got it. Thank you. so what we are saying is when we say right understanding it means seeing the essence of the reality as it is seeing that part of the reality which is definite which is universal which is continuous otherwise what we are focusing on like we said is largely the form and at most a little bit of the property but that doesn't give us the whole picture about any unit it's only a superficial what we can see and if we assume that this is what the unit is then we may not understand things properly because we are not seeing the major chunk of what is there in all the units that part which is definite that part which is universal that part which is continuous that is possible only through awakening to the activities of contemplation understanding and realization so like we said contemplation has to do with the natural characteristic of a unit that has to do with natural characteristic means being able to see the relationship of any unit with any other unit and the participation of that unit in the larger order understanding has to do with understanding the harmony that is there in every unit already or the self organization in every unit and coexistence when we come to that we can it has to do with the submergence of all the units in space so all these things we have to understand the innateness when we talked of nature we said you know nature is divided into four orders or we have divided for the purpose of understanding we have divided nature into four orders and we don't give the details but essentially what is the way in which we are why we are clubbing some units together is an order has to do with all this part the essence of the unit so we we'll look at that essentially the innateness of the four orders and the natural characteristics of the four orders these natural characteristics of these four orders are different the innateness of the four orders is different so those four and four eight things plus coexistence is the same for all that submergence is there for all the units so nine things so all this we have to try to understand and where is the understanding the understanding is within us so if we look at 
seen. So we said form. Form has to do with shape, size, density, those kind of things. Property. Property, we are seeing the effect of one unit on another unit. We are able to see that this one unit is seeing its relationship with the other unit, recognizing that relationship and fulfilling that relationship. So one unit is recognizing the relationship with the other unit and fulfilling that relationship. For instance, sun. Now the sun is up there in the sky and the trees are down here on the ground. You're just seeing, you know, one unit with another unit. Now there is a relationship, there is some effect of the sun on the plant. So you'll find that when the plants are growing, they tend to grow, you know, towards the leaves or the, the branches tend to turn towards the sun. You'll notice that in all the plants. Now this is something that is definite. Like that, there are many things you can see. How is this definite? It's always so. No plant tries to turn away from the sun and grow. You'll notice this. So you can say that this plant recognizes the relationship with the sun and fulfills that relationship in a very definite manner. This is what we keep referring to as recognizing and fulfilling. So you'll see it in every other unit. In the human being, you know, in the body part also, you will see recognition and fulfillment is definite. Problem only comes in the case of the self because we may not be able to see the reality the way it is. And so we may have assumed something about it and we have the choice. So what we do with that choice, that depends on whether we have understood things or whether we have assumed something about them. So if I am seeing through sensation, I am using the body, isn't it? I am using the eyes to see what something looks like. I may be using the ears to hear the call of a bird and so on. So many examples. I may be using the tongue to taste a certain food and so on. So one part can be like we were saying, the lowest, using the lowest activity in the self to try to see a unit. So there, my focus is only on the form. Maybe a little bit of the property, but largely on the form. So for instance, as a human being, if my focus is on the body, and if I think I am body, and if my um, focus is on the form, then I will get busy trying to beautify the body so that it looks nice. So going to the gym, building the body, wearing nice clothes because what it looks like is important to me. So my focus is there, eating tasty food. So it is mostly largely about focus on this form and trying to see through sensation. Then if I use the next um, higher activity, which is that of thought, thinking, analyzing, comparing, there I can rationalize things. There I can see what might be the impact of one unit on the other unit. So if I eat this food, it may be tasty. I am seeing the taste from the level of selecting tasting. But I am also able to see 
its impact on the body is it harmful for the body is it nurturing for the body or is it going to harm the body that part i can see from the rational part the the property you can say but then there is a lot that is deeper what we are calling the essence of any unit this only involves the self of course the body is involved only when we are seeing through sensation the rest of it is all through the self only directly from the self for the thinking part for the analyzing all of that you don't really have to get inputs from the body you can do this within the self you can uh, when it comes to the essence part the part that is unchanging the part that is um, universal that part also you don't need the body with within the self the activities of contemplation understanding realization as they get activated i am able to see more and more of this essence of any unit and we said that is what natural characteristic that has to do with the relationship that has to do with the participation of that unit in the larger order for instance there i can see from there i may be able to see that in the body there are so many cells no and each cell is working along with the others seeing its role participating in the you know whole for the good of the body as a whole so it is seeing its relationship and it is participating in that relationship similarly if we see you know the innateness the self organization that part of any unit you will see that there is a harmony in every unit there is already a harmony if i see within myself you know things are there in a certain order it is innate to me or to any human being to any self that you want to be happy nowhere will you find a self which is wanting to be unhappy that is innate that is a part of the self organization you cannot change that but you need to understand that and of course when you talk of the submergence that you can see directly that the units are submerged in space from the activity of realization and from there you can see now how the relationship is already there because of this submergence of all the units in space if we start with the physical order so units of the physical order here you have mentioned soil metal so you can see all of these you know yeah. earth the whatever else you can see that exists in the form of when we talk of rocks soil is one part rocks is another part wood also when it is cut down from a tree now it is no longer growing once you cut the wood that also would be a part of the physical order now but when it was part of the tree and it was growing then we would have placed it in the bio order so in the physical order what is innate to the physical order just to exist to be there what is the natural characteristic of the participation there is some process is going on within some composition decomposition these processes are going on within our focus here is largely on the innateness and the natural characteristic 
So we'll be looking at that in more depth here. Then if you see the bio order, these plants, these trees, the grasses, all this. Here you will see that the activity within them in the soil, in the physical order, it was just formation, deformation. Here there is formation, deformation, plus there is this pulsation, this respiration. And what is innate to all the plants is they exist and there is growth. Nowhere will you find a plant that doesn't grow. They all grow. And when you look at the natural characteristic or the participation, you find in addition to the composition decomposition, this, you know, when you see the participation with another unit, say the body, I will find that it either nurtures the body or it worsens the body. This activity is, or this characteristic is there for all the plants. When it comes to the animal, and when you look at the animal body, animal body is similar to the plant body in the sense that it also has formation and deformation. It also has respiration. If you look at the innateness, this also, it is innate for it to exist and for it to grow. We're referring to the animal body here. And when it comes to the natural characteristic, here also there is composition, decomposition, and whether it nurtures or worsens, you know, different parts that is also um, consistent. When it comes to the self, the self of the animal body, now here the activities in the animal body are largely based on selecting tasting, largely. If you look at the innateness, what is innate, what is already there as a part of its self-organization is that every animal self has a will to live. It wants to live. And if you look at the natural characteristic, then you will find that there are some animals that naturally behave a certain way, which we may refer to as cruel or non-cruel. So a cow, we call it non-cruel, so it has a certain kind of behavior. A tiger, we refer to it as cruel, that has a different kind of behavior. But this is definite, right? And this is breed-based. This is depending on, you no. Know, uh, which animal we are talking about. Some animals will come under um, those that we refer to as, you know, um, I mean, this, these terms that we use uh, are also cruel and non-cruel is from our perspective. But in nature, you will see that it is not really cruel or non-cruel. We use these terms to try to study that. Then in the human being, again, you have the body and you have the self. In the body, same thing like the plants, you will see that in what is innate to the human body is existence and growth in the body. You, the body grows from childhood to adult and so on. And in the natural characteristic, you will notice this, that there is this composition, decomposition, all this is going on in the body. Now, if you look at the self, now in the self, there is activity of 
this imaging, analyzing, selecting, tasting. In the imagination, what activities we have been looking at, right? Desire, thought, expectation. These activities are going on. And there is a potential for understanding in eye, that purple block that you see in the lower part. So what is innate to the human being, to the human self, that I want to live, I have a will to live like the animal, but I have a will to live with continuous happiness. This is innate to every human being, every self, and you cannot change that. And this potential for this is there in the form of right feeling and thought through right understanding. May not have reached that potential, but the potential is there. And natural characteristic, when I see my participation, my role, my relationship with others, then when I understand that, then I will have all these, you know, perseverance, bravery, generosity, kindness, beneficence, compassion. These are all the qualities that I can have. So there's a lot to reflect on. We are almost out of time. But, um, and I know there will be many questions. Maybe we can just take one quick question. If we are able to answer it, that's fine. Otherwise, we'll just uh, take it up tomorrow. Jagdish ji, did you have any observation or question? Preeti Anand ji. You're very faint. I can't hear you. Okay. Hello. Is is it audible now? Yes, audible. Yes. yes. Uh, so, madam, um, looking into the earlier slide, like I used to think that there is relation existing and always between one self and the other self. But now I have seen that relation between one unit and other, like sun and the Mm. Plant, plant, you are saying. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, even they are self? No. No. Bio we are not saying that. We are not saying that. Okay. But, nowhere are we saying self? But you can see in this nature chart. There is. Huh. Huh. So, also so we, uh, we say... It is definite behavior. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean it has the self. Right, right. We may use the term recognition and fulfillment. It is to see that that behavior or the conduct when they interact is very definite. Right, understood. Yeah. Thank you, Didi, for such an enriching uh -huh. and engaging session. So, uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you to all our co explorers to listen so carefully and putting their questions.